Hi guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you joining me. It's awesome to be here and to do to do this every week for you guys. Um, today's sermon is called Training Truths. Training Truths. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do and what you're about to speak. Father, be with me today. Um, Lord, I just praise you and worship you for what you speak, what you're going to do, uh, and who you are. I I worship you and praise you because, because you are and that you are. You don't have to do anything for me or for anyone else to worship you and praise you. Just just being the fact that you insist you exist is enough for us to worship and praise you. Father, we give you praise and give you worship and give you honor, Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Speak to me, speak through me. Jesus, amen. Hey guys, um, this sermon, as I said, is called Trading Truths. A trading with a D, training with, a, with an N, training truths. When I was in church um, last week, um, I the preacher was talking about this whole um live your truth um saying and how how he, um how it's so about you and self-centered and how you're um not supposed to live your truth new truth that he that God has made you to be. It was a wonderful sermon. It was by Stephen Furtick. It was awesome last week. But as I sat there, I began to think about the whole uh, of your truth thing. And, and something kind of dawned on me. The Lord spoke to me and he said, it depends. It, de it depends what your truth stands on. He's like, the term live your truth is not a bad idea, but it depends on what your truth stands on. He's like, well, I, I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, well, um, if your truth uh, stands on the whims of the world, like you can do anything, there's no right or wrong, everything is subjective and subjective truth, and you can do whatever the heck you want as long as you're over 18 and you're not hurting anyone, you can do whatever you want, live your truth, do you, and all that. He's like, that for the believer is not how I want you to live because um, there's a way, the Bible said there's a way that seems right unto a man or a woman at the end thereof is death. And a lot of people are living in death because they're living their truth and their truth stands on the whims of the world like I could like I could like men today and women tomorrow. I could uh, um, be in a be in a polygamous relationship with three people. It doesn't have to be two or maybe four people. Or I could just have four sums for a night or three sums for a night or. If you're married, I could sleep with you, whatever. Anything that suits you and suits the flow, 
the flesh um, stands on the wombs of the world. So this is right today, and this is not right tomorrow. That's how, that's what what the wombs of the world say. This is wrong today, or and this is wrong tomorrow. This skirt works today, but it's not in tomorrow. See, the problem with living your truth based on the whims of the world is it's because the whims of the world, the trends of the world keep changing. But the word of God stands forever. Like, um, the word of God stands forever. And you can take any word, either written word or any spoken word, that he spoke to you and take it to the bank and trust that it will never, it will never fade. And if your truth is based on the whims of the world, it's ever changing. It's not consistent. And if your truths are based, but if you, if when you say live your truth, it comes from and um, it's ba your truth flows out of the whim of God's word, who is our firm foundation, um, and he stands forever. He stands firm. His word never changes. The application and how, how um, he brings his word about changes, uh, depending on the personality of the person and what he wants to bring out of the person's life. But his word, either written or felt or spoken, does not change. And if you base your truth on on that, yes, I would say by all means live your truth because in turn you are living his tru truth and by living his truth you are living the truth. So um, I think I will change the title of this sermon from uh, training truths to the truth train which is your if you're living your truth based on the word of god your truth becomes his truth and his truth is the truth jesus said i am the way the truth and the life. He said, no one comes to the Father except through me. And we don't like that. We just, we just like, you can do whatever you want. You, you don't need to listen to anyone. You can just do you and whatever. But everyone in the Bible who uh, based their truth on the world Everyone in the Bible who just did what they wanted, wanted in their own eyes um, ended up in disaster. There's a whole book of um, the Bible called Judges, and it's in the Old Testament. And if you read the book of Judges, there's a whole group of people that got into a mess because they refused to live by God's rule. They wanted to rule and all of the, those people, everything fell in disaster. There were all kinds of murders and everything going on because they wanted to live their truth by their world's Standards and not only in the and, and 
and everything in the book of Jesus, you will, you will see this line over and over again, uh, said the, the people did what was right in their own eyes, over and over again, after every disastrous story, every murder, every every disastrous thing that went on in the book of Judges, um, it would say the people did what was right in their own eyes. Um, and even with David and his son Solomon, there were parts of their lives that they did what was right in their own eyes. David killed his lover's husband because she got pregnant and he couldn't handle it. But his, his, his friend Jonathan called him out on it. Boy, do we need more friends to just, to just be real friends. Not to be judgmental, but to call us out on our crap when we do it. Um, and I think, I think this whole, I can do whatever I want, I can just do me and whatever, there's no right, no wrong, and everything's subjective. That, I think that's what's causing the whole uh, havoc in the world because if there's anything, everything subjective, uh, no right, no wrong, what, what, what's wrong for you is right for me. If there's no real basis for truth, I believe that's when the world starts to crumble. And I believe that's why we're starting to crumble. Because there's, there, if there's no basis for truth and everybody's right, everybody's doing what is right in their own eyes, there is no standard. What we need in the church and in the world, we need to, we need to get the standard back. And the way that we get the standard back is we need to look in the Word. We need to use the Word of God, either the spoken or the written Word of God, um, as, our, as the standard for our lives. When I say spoken or written Word of God, let me explain that for a bit. Um, I mean... I mean, the written word of God is the Bible, um, the holy text that was inspired and God breathed, um, and the the spoken word of God, which means every word that He's spoken to you about your life, and you could say. How do you, how do I know that God speaks to me? Um, everybody says God spoke to me. Well, God never speaks to me. Yes, he does. You're just not listening. Or maybe you're not aware of how he speaks to you. I said a few weeks ago, and I keep saying this over and over again, um, because um, all God's children are really, are real different are really different. He has different ways that he speaks to each and every one of his children. And to know the way that he speaks to you, it takes time to know it. It takes really getting in there with the Lord and really understanding um, how he speaks to you and what ways he speaks to you with the ways are so different and so vast and only you can know that the Lord is speaking to you and that will only come with time so back to live living your living your truths upon his truths 
Um, like I said, living, living your truth is not a bad thing, but it depends on what your truth stands on. Is your truth the outflow of his truth? Or is your truth the outflow of what the world says? His truth stands forever. His truth comes from his word, either written or felt or spoken. That, that's his truth. But the world's truth can come from anywhere. It can, you can do anything and it changes. It's it's so it's so slapdash like it's here this is true today this is not true tomorrow this is this like the problem is the world's truth is dependent on the trends of the people so like way back when this was true because it depended on the trends of the people. Now, this is true because this is trendy. This is whatever. This is how we're living now. To bring the standards of God's truth back into the world. And I'm not saying to force it on people, but I'm saying to the church needs to set the standard oh oh how how i would love um how would how would i how i would love for believers to be at the tables where key decisions are made and not not just not to be political from your pulpit but to to understand that we are the world that strengths we are supposed to set standards and no matter what the world does with their standards god truth god's truth stays the same so the world could do whatever they want with laws and whatever but god's truth still remains and instead of fighting laws, we need to um, we need to show people in a loving way God's standards. We need to say God doesn't hate you; He loves you, but He has standards, and. And we may not like them, but they're for our own good. And I think people don't like being told that this is wrong. They don't like being told what to do. But at the end of the day, without standards, countries fall, people fall, family fall. I don't think it's laws that that rules the world i think it's a standard so if the standards have been set way up there and they're un, unmovable that's where that's where um the real truth and the real light can come in and i think that believers truth needs to first stand on his truth and i think and i think the um i'm i'm all for being authentic but i don't think authenticity should be god i don't think authenticity should be the whole like the whole reason is to be the whole reason for living is to be authentic uh no the whole reason for a christian's life is to set forth the kingdom is to 
to bring forth the kingdom of God into the earth. And yes, I do believe in authenticity. I'm totally in for being real and authentic and sharing pain, whatever. But it's gotten to the point where authenticity has become God. So, so I've got to be real. This is how I feel and blah, blah, blah. And it's okay to, to say how you feel, but how you feel can change from day to day. And yes, I believe in being authentic, um, showing who you really are, but authenticity can't come before the kingdom. How you feel about something cannot, for the believer, come before how God feels about it. I know that there are some issues that that I struggle with and you know that that I have my feelings about but I cannot let my feelings whatever they are on whatever issue override what God says. So I've got to let my truth be dependent on God's truth. So if I were to be my authentic self and it comes straight from the word of God, that's great. So if I, if my parents says that I need to be, let's say a doctor, but I'm called to be a school teacher, um, by God and his truth, and it's what he had shown me. He showed me that I'm good with kids. He showed me that I have skills for, for teaching and for getting people interested in learning. But my family say, oh, no, you need to be a doctor. God's truth for me should override what anybody says. And my authentic self, my true self, the, the self that God has created me to be, says I'm to be a teacher, that overrides everything because it is his truth. But if, but if my truth is like, I'm called to be a preacher, but my truth says, oh, I don't have the education. I didn't go to Bible college, so I'll just work in a factory. No offense, no shade on people working in factories, by the way. But if that, if that is not, not the truth for your life, if that is not your purpose, you are not living your truth. You are living the truth that the world tells you. Um, the world tells you that you need to go to Bible college. The world tells you that you need to be scholarly and that you need to know the Bible from cover to cover to espouse his word. All you need to espouse his word is his anointing on your life and his and his unction in your spirit and he will teach you the rest he will teach you the ways he wants you to espouse his truth to, to the to your people to people and yes you need to study and show yourself approved de most definitely but don't let the lack of study, the lack of education, the lack of what you think stop you from living his truth for your life. Um, so your truth become a vote. The truth train is your truth should become his truth his truth and in turn 
His truth is the truth. And I think, and I think when truth is purely subjective, we're in trouble. And I think um, we need to get back to standards, as I said before. We need to understand that the Lord has standards. The Lord says no, and the Lord says yes, because he's, he's a good parent. And when we accept the Lord into our lives, we accept not only his spirit, but not only if we're going to heaven, but we accept his parentage, his tutelage, we accept his guidance, and he wants us to be, he wants to be Lord of our lives. And Lord of our lives doesn't mean salvation. Lord of our lives means he wants to be involved in everything from how you raise your children to, to what job you take to, you know, to everything in your lives. It, it, you'll hear some people say, God doesn't care about that. Well, I think he does. And then if, if, you're, if you're praying about something and you're not hearing a yes or no, go ahead and do the next thing because he's telling you to go, that he has a plan and that you don't need to worry. Just go and he'll show you the way. But if he's giving you a definitive no or yes, depending on who you are and what he wants you to do, by all means, you have to follow that. But um, it doesn't mean he's not guiding you if he doesn't say no or yes all the time. It means just do what you know in your spirit to do. And then if it's wrong, he'll guide you. And, and um, he has a plan for or whatever. So, if you, you if you don't know whether to take this job or that job, just just listen to your spirit deep inside, and then do and then do what your spirit is telling you to do at that moment. Because God has a plan with whatever way you take. So it, it's not always going to be an audible answer. And it sometimes and, and it sometimes may be a closed door. Sometimes may be not for now, but he's always guiding you. He's always leading you. And he's, he's like, be aware of the ways that I'm leading you because the ways that I'm leading you are are going to be um, different than you've ever been, le been led before. Um, so thank you guys for, li for listening to truth train uh, I really appreciate it so the truth train is your truth stands on his truth because his truth is the truth capital T A G so that's the truth train so thank you guys for joining me today I really appreciate it Bye.
You are the way that shines through the dark. You are the way to the heart. Keeps me alive. I'm truth and the light. That shines through the dark. You are the truth that brings hope to the heart. You are the one that keeps alive. I believe you are the truth and the light. That's by a group called True By. It's a great song. I'll see you next week. Bye.